Hello everyone, and welcome to a follow-up video of my first Uldua tips and tricks video for Warlocks. In this video, I will cover some of the things that have come to my attention after the last video and just some new things I've found and started to do since then. I hope you like this video and find some of the stuff useful, some of the stuff might you already know, but there might be some neat stuff that you didn't know. Enjoy! Let's start off with Ignis. On Ignis you can use a little ledge in the water so when he does his knock up, you basically don't even move and you can almost instantly start casting again instead of having to use a global on your portal, as demonstrated in this video by all the warlocks you can see in the water. Downside to this is that Ignis will run into the water and therefore out of position to grab you into the pot if you get unlucky. And you will have some mad melees. On Razor Scale, I have a couple new things. Since my last video, it's been discovered that you can actually outrange the knockback if you stand correctly, making you not even needing the warlock portal to get back into position. Downside to this is that when you stand max range like this, you can't attack as fast as the people who stand closer to Razor Skill where he lands. A counteract to this is to stand a little closer at the start and then use your instant cast like Corruption, Agony, etc. to move to the correct spot. My second new tip for Razor Scale is to save your ICDs for the actual boss. On Razor Scale, if you value your pass or your raid needs every bit of DPS they can in order to one face Razor Scale, stop dealing damage to the ads when Razor Scale is close to coming down so all your ICDs are ready for when it lands. Those adds do not count for your powers and they die rather quickly even if some people stop damaging them. Next we have XT. On XT the only new stuff I've started to do is when my first Curse of Agony fades from XT, instead of reapplying a new Agony I will instead do Curse of Doom. With the kill speed of my guild currently, when the heart dies the Doom will have about 30 seconds left on it making it a superior choice to Agony in this specific case. Speaking of the Agony on XT, I also no longer Agony the Heart. At the start of Uldua, I was doing Agony on the Heart because it lived almost full duration, but at this point the XT Heart is dying so fast that I skipped doing Agony on the Heart. In most cases, the Agony provide anywhere from like 4 to 6 ticks of damage before the Heart dies, making it not so lucrative. Next up, Iron Council. Similar to XT, where I Doom, I've started to properly use Doom on Iron Council as well. And by that, I mean I will Doom in advance of the next boss we kill. How early you need to put up the Curse of Doom depends on your raid. In my guild runs in particular, I put it up quite early, before the, even the power room spawns. But you'll have to see for yourself in your own raids. As soon as the Curse of Doom goes off on Rune Master Molgheim, which is the second guy we kill, I will instantly put it up on Steelbreaker as well and it usually lines up quite well for me. Second new thing I started doing on Iron Council is to drain life to keep the corruption up. In my previous video I would do Shadowbolt rank 1 to keep my roll corruption going on Steelbreaker. But I'm not opting but now I am opting to do drain life instead as it refreshes the corruption instantly instead of having like a travel time on the Shadow Bolt and I just really prefer that playstyle instead. It also makes it so you can stutter step when you're uh, trying to run away from Death Room to refresh the corruption. Next up, Kolagarn. Since my last video, I've gotten quite a few powerful and nice multi-dot weak or specifically made for Warlocks and it is amazing. It really makes multi-dotting on bosses like Kolagorn a lot easier and I suggest you try it out. I have the weak aura you currently see in the video on my discord just like any other weak aura you see on the screen. Next up, Thorim. In my first video I didn't really do anything for Thorim, so I thought I would do Thorim justice and I've got quite a few things in store for you guys. The first thing I have in store is the pre-portal before you even go down to the gauntlet. Um, so since the last video, I've noticed I do some stuff on Thorim I didn't even cover in that video. The first thing I do is to pre-place the portal before going into the tunnel so I can get into position faster when jumping down. 
This is a particularly nice if you're a little bit behind upstairs because your friends rocket booted and you didn't have it, for example. The next thing is the pet. A lot of people complain about their pet not following them when they jump down from the tunnel. The biggest cause of this that I have found is that your pet walks into the traps before Thorim and gets stunned. If they are stunned, they often won't teleport down with you, so try to go on a wider angle around the traps so they don't get stunned. Also, don't send your pet on Thorin too early. Keep your pet on passive and follow, and it will greatly increase the chances of your pet instantly teleporting down with you. Next up is good positions on Thorin. On Thorim, there is some positions that are vastly superior to others and the biggest and best positions you can do, in my opinion, is right in front of the stairs leading down to the gauntlet. Because of how the lightning pillars are placed in the room, when you stand at this position, you only have to move a few yards left or right to avoid any of the pizza slices coming to you. My last thing for Thorim is don't over move. A good way to improve your Thorim is to not over move when the pizza slices are coming. Try and learn the different lighting charges and how wide they go so you don't over move by for example 10 to 15 yards more than you had to do in order to dodge it. Next up, Freya. Since my last video, I haven't really started to do anything differently other than how I handled the triple ad wave I would say. What I do now is a corruption on each of the ads and then seed off of Freya and then I will refresh the corruption on the snap blaster with a haunt because it has the highest HP pool out of the three ads. The haunt debuff makes your seed hit harder as well on the target making it quite valuable. Next up, Mimiron. New stuff for Mimron includes just remembering to put down your new soul wells during intermissions as it's quite easy to find uses for hellstones on this boss. Just try to not do them right before the fire comes as you'd most likely have to move and cancel the cast. Similar to Kologorn, the multi-dot Weakora also works for Mimiron. Weakora is of course available on my discord and the only thing different for the one I have on my Discord is that I have changed the names on mine that I use in-game to 123 on the nameplates, because I use Shift 123 to target these particular parts. The one on my Discord has the proper names on it. Now for the pet as well on Mimron. A common mistake as to why many people's pets die on Mimron, particularly in the last phase, is that they will put the pet on the bottom part of Mimiron. Because of this, they will die from the laser barrage from the middle part. If you, however, send your pet to attack the middle instead of the bottom, it will always be behind the middle part and therefore never get hit by the laser barrage. Now for Vesex. I didn't really cover Drain Soul in my past video, so I will do it in this one. If you find yourself struggling for mana on Vesex, going oom um too fast, etc., I urge you to start using Drain Soul instead of Shadow Bolts. Drain Soul has the best damage per mana point spent in the Warlock tree, and it's just amazing for this boss in particular. An advice I will give though is to not start a Drain Soul right before a Shadow Crash spawns or is cast from Vesex, because the Drain Soul is only effective if you get a good duration out of it instead of having to stop the cast after one or two ticks. Now for Yogg Saron. I thought I would add phase 1 of Yogg to this new video. Reason for that is I see a lot of questions about phase 1 and how to properly handle the ads. What I do and I found works the best in my raids is that I will do corruption, unstable affliction on the ads. I don't do agony. The ads die too fast for agony to get some any proper value. After that I will of course haunt one and then spam Shadow Bolt. And if there is three or more alive, I will do Seed of Corruption spam. Now for Algolon. A great survivability tip for Algolon is to use Shadow Ward. Use it pre-pull, use it when you don't have a raid defensive active and when you're kinda in a sketchy situation with your HP. While inside the black holes of Big Bang, you can also do Shadow Ward as you take constant shadow damage inside. 
If you're looking to take your, uh, your damage to the next level on Algalon, try to always position yourself in a manner where you don't really stand near other players, but you're still in range of the spell haste totem. Not stacking too much with other people will give you less movement from the cosmic mashes and therefore gi give you more uptime on the boss. My last tip for Algalon is to know what the plan is for the last phase of the boss. If the plan from your tank is to take Algalon to the middle, don't stand in the middle of the room during your execute, as when the tank drags Algalon on top of you, you are 100% going to have to move away from cosmic smashes and you just lose uptime during your drain soul, and we never want that to happen. As a last little tip I'll give for you guys along the road, is that there are certain trash packs in Uldua where it's just not really worth it to send in your pet. The packs I don't really send my pet on that much includes the trash right after XT and the trash leading down to Vesex. On these trash packs you're probably doing nearly maybe 20,000 DPS spamming your seed and your pet will maybe do 400-500 DPS, but there's mechanics that can kill it if you don't perfectly control it. So if you don't feel comfortable in these trash packs, I would just recommend keeping your pet by your side. And there it is guys. Sorry it has taken so long for me to release this video, but I've been so busy with university, streaming, real life stuff that it hasn't really been that much time for making YouTube videos. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, comment if you have any questions or come join me on twitch.tv slash technotv where I will gladly answer any questions as well. Other than that. Have a great day everyone, until next time.